Mental Health First Aid, Personal View In my 15 years as an HR professional in the oil and gas industry, I've seen firsthand the challenges people face when it comes to mental health. Witnessing colleagues struggling with these issues, I realized the importance of equipping myself with the tools to provide support and guidance. We'll explore how mental health first aid training has been invaluable in my role. It's given me a deeper understanding of mental health conditions and practical strategies to assist those in need. I've been able to create a more compassionate and supportive workplace culture, and I believe it's something every HR professional should consider. In this blog post, I will share my experience on mental health awareness and discuss the key aspects of mental health first aid, including its definition, importance, and practical applications. I will talk about the common challenges and best practices for providing support to individuals experiencing mental health difficulties. Note that this is me sharing a view. What is mental health first aid? First things first, what exactly is mental health first aid? Well, it's pretty much what it sounds like. Just like regular first aid helps with physical injuries, mental health first aid is about providing initial support to someone experiencing a mental health crisis or developing mental health problems. Now, I'm not saying you need to become a therapist overnight. Mental health first aid is about being there for someone, offering support, and helping them get professional help if needed. It's about being a good friend, colleague, or family member when someone's going through a tough time. Why is it important? You might be wondering, Zik, why should I bother learning this? Great question! Here's the deal, mental health problems are way more common than you might think. In fact, about one in five adults experiences a mental illness in any given year. That's a lot of people. By learning mental health first aid, you're equipping yourself with the tools to help those around you. You could literally be a lifeline for someone in crisis. Plus, let's face it, we all go through rough patches. Learning these skills might help you take better care of yourself too. The basics, ALGE. All right, let's get into the nitty-gritty. In my training sessions, I teach a simple acronym, ALGE. It's an easy way to remember the basic steps of mental health first aid. Let's break it down. A. Approach, assess, and assist with any crisis. The first step is to approach the person, assess the situation, and assist with any immediate crisis. This could be anything from panic attacks to thoughts of self-harm. Your job here is to stay calm and make sure the person is safe. L. Listen non-judgmentally. This one's huge, folks. Sometimes, all a person needs is someone to really listen. And I mean really listen, not just waiting for your turn to speak. Try to understand their feelings and experiences without judging them. Trust me, it makes a world of difference. G. Give support and information. Once you've listened, it's time to offer support. This could be emotional support, like validating their feelings, or practical support, like helping them find resources. Remember, you're not there to fix their problems, just to support them through it. E. Encourage appropriate professional help. Here's where you might need to give a gentle nudge towards professional help. This could be a therapist, counselor, or their family doctor. If they're hesitant, offer to help them find someone or even accompany them to their first appointment. E. Encourage other supports. The last step is to encourage other forms of support. This could be self-help strategies, support groups, or reaching out to friends and family. Remember, recovery is often a journey, and having a support network can make a huge difference. Real-life scenarios. Now, I know what you're thinking. Zik, this all sounds great in theory, but what about real life? Fair point. Let's walk through a couple of scenarios I've encountered in my work. Scenario 1, the stressed-out co-worker. Imagine you notice your co-worker, Sarah, seems really stressed lately. She's snapping at people, missing deadlines, and you've caught her crying in the bathroom. How would you apply ALGE? Approach, you might say, Hey Sarah, I've noticed you seem a bit stressed lately. Is everything okay? Listen, if she opens up, really listen to what she's saying. Maybe she's struggling with workload or having problems at home. Give support, you could say, that sounds really tough. Is there anything I can do to help? Encourage professional help if it seems appropriate. You might suggest, have you thought about talking to someone about this? Our company has an employee assistance program that offers free counseling. Encourage other supports. Is there anyone else you can talk to about this? Maybe your partner or a close friend? Scenario 2, the depressed friend. Let's say your friend, Mike, 
has been withdrawing from social activities and seems really down. You're worried he might be depressed. How would you handle this? Approach is Mike, I've noticed you haven't been hanging out much lately. I'm a bit worried about you. How are you doing? Listen, if Mike opens up about feeling hopeless or having no energy, listen without trying to immediately cheer him up or solve his problems. Give support, I'm sorry you're going through this. Depression is really tough, but you're not alone. I'm here for you. Encourage professional help, have you thought about talking to a therapist? I know a great one if you'd like a recommendation. Encourage other supports, what about joining that hiking group you used to enjoy? Getting out in nature can sometimes help. Common mistakes to avoid. Now, I've seen a lot of well-meaning people make some common mistakes when trying to help. Let's talk about what not to do. Don't say just cheer up, or if it's all in your head, mental health problems are real and complex. Simplistic advice like this can make people feel misunderstood and invalidated. Don't try to be their therapist. Remember, your role is to support and guide them towards professional help if needed, not to try and solve all their problems. Don't gossip, if someone confides in you, keep it confidential unless you believe they're in immediate danger. Don't ignore your own needs, helping others is great, but make sure you're taking care of your own mental health too. Taking care of yourself. Speaking of which, let's talk about self-care for a minute. Helping others with their mental health can be emotionally draining. It's crucial to look after yourself too. Here are some tips. Set boundaries, it's okay to say no sometimes. You can't pour from an empty cup. Practice self-care, do things that recharge you, whether that's reading a book, going for a run, or having a bubble bath. Seek support, if you're feeling overwhelmed, don't hesitate to reach out for help yourself. Keep learning, the more you understand about mental health, the better equipped you'll be to help others and yourself. Wrapping up. Alright, we've covered a lot of ground here. Remember, mental health first aid isn't about having all the answers or being a perfect supporter. It's about being there, listening, and helping guide people towards the help they need. In my years of practice, I've seen firsthand how powerful this kind of support can be. You don't need fancy degrees or special skills to make a difference. Just being there, really listening, and showing you care can be life-changing for someone struggling with their mental health. So, I encourage you to keep learning about mental health. Take a first aid mental health course if you can. And most importantly, be kind to yourself and others. We're all in this together, and a little compassion goes a long way. Remember, you've got this. And who knows? The mental health first aid skills you learn today might just help you save a life tomorrow. Stay well.